Hey guys, Zaryu you here, and today we are looking at my updated Ice, Gauntlet, and Fire Staff build for New World. So without further ado, let's jump into it. This is my character. I'm level 43 with full intelligence and 50 con. So basically what we're doing here, guys, with the full intelligence is we're going for 200 in so that we're getting 10% mana back after every single dodge. In this game, a dodge is basically a roll. If you're medium armor, it's going to be the sidestep or that little that little shimmy shimmy. And if you're heavy armor, it'll be the, the little weaker one. But anytime I roll, I get 10% mana back, which is huge. All right, so we're going for this 200 mana break point. Now with constitution, we just want to get to 50 so that health consumables are 20% stronger. Nothing crazy here, right? Um, I could consider maybe stopping at 200 int and then going for like, 100 or maybe even 150 con as a level it's something i'm considering but right now i'm going a little bit more glass cannon full in 50 con and it's feeling really nice and i just realized i'm filming this video literally inside of an enemy fort so that's pretty badass but let's continue we got the weapon masteries here guys um we'll start off with the fire staff um my ice gauntlet build is similar to a previous video i did but since i've been leveling a bit more and i do have my ice gauntlet up to 20 i do have a couple uh changes here so with the fire staff, the three talents that we're going with are Pillar of Fire, Burnout, and Fireball. Now, Pillar of Fire is bugged right now, unfortunately. I did tweet at New World. Hopefully they can fix this soon. But if your weapon is sheathed and you hit Pillar of Fire, it actually just uses it at your feet instead of normally if your weapon sheathed and you use one of your abilities, you should still be able to aim it with the AoE reticule, right? But hopefully they fix that. But regardless of the bug, I'm still playing with Pillar of Fire. Just want to make sure that my weapon is unsheathed before I actually use it. All right. And this build, um, before I get further into it, is really focused around PvP, right? This is the build I've been pulling off crazy 1v4s out in the world with, crazy 1v1s, all the stuff. And it seems like between the Fire Staff and the Ice Gauntlet, you can pretty much 1v1 anything, which is pretty darn cool. But let's keep getting into it. We've got First Strike, so I'm trying to use my Pillar of Fire against a target that is full life, right? So if I ca come across someone chopping down a tree and I want to just gank him real quick, we'll pull out the Fire Staff, we'll Pillar of Fire straight into a Fireball, and they're just going to take so much damage. And Pillar of Fire is actually bugged right now in another way as well. Sometimes it double hits if you catch them on the edge of the ring that you're setting on the ground. So... If you want to actually take advantage of that double hit, you could put them right on the edge of that little circle and you'll actually sometimes get a double hit with Pillar of Fire that does 40% more damage. And then you fireball them and they just get one shot, which is awesome. So this is spell focus. This is one of the reasons I really like my Fire Staff as well. We get 5% max mana back on a heavy attack, but we also have Flare down here, which makes heavy attacks no longer consume mana. So one of the cool things about this build as a wizard, sometimes you go oom and people are like, what do you do when you're oom? Well, you can ice block, you know, if you're oom. But another thing you could do is just spam heavy attacks, right? These don't cost mana. Even if you're completely out of mana, you can regen by spamming heavies with your fire staff, right? So that is a huge, huge, huge benefit of playing with spell focus and flare. We are going with clear mind. I think this ability was bugged, but they fixed it. So you're just getting increased damage when, when above 50% mana, which is great. Um, in PvE, you could keep yourself above 50% mana. In PvP, a lot of the times you can, especially if you have over 200 in for those rolls. Now, we have Singe giving us critical um, hit with the Fire Staff. Um, giving a little bit extra burning damage when we get that critical hit, which is nice. We have Fireball with 140% weapon damage. I love Fireball for finishing people off. Like, even if I have my Ice Gauntlet out and I'm doing most of the work with my Ice Gauntlet, I will switch to my Fire Staff just to throw out a Fireball and kill someone because it is relatively easy to land. It's almost like a noob tube in Modern Warfare 2. It's relatively easy to land because it has a little bit of splash damage when you get used to it. So it's definitely an ability I like to, to finish people off with. Um, now, I don't have Scorched Earth because no one in PvP is usually going to stand in the Fireball field anyway most of the time. Maybe in Wars, this would be a better talent. And then the Direct Hit give you mana back, which mana isn't really an issue, um, and reduces Fire Staff cooldowns by 7%. Maybe something I would consider, but overall, the mana doesn't seem to be an issue, and the Fire Staff cooldowns aren't something I'm like keeping my Fire Staff out for. Fire Staff is something I would switch to to finish someone or to chase someone, so... Both of these just didn't seem quite worth it. Now, what did seem worth it is clear casting. If you haven't taken damage in the last three seconds, deal 10% more damage. So with 
this light armor build, and I'll show you guys my armor after this, with, with light armor, a lot of the times you're just rolling and dodging, and you're not actually taking much damage. You could save full life for a very long time. So this is almost just 10% more damage, which is great if you evade damage properly. Um, we got Spell Slinger here, which gives me a 15% chance to crit. That's insane, right? 10% damage, 15% chance to crit. These are just great, great talents for increasing your DPS. We've already covered Flare. We got Prophet of a Fire God, that just gives you 20% critical strike damage, which is also insane. Hey, there's a typo in the game. Increased is spelled wrong. New World. Come on, let's get it. Now I am going Runes of Helios. This is a talent that I didn't immediately pick. And I'm going to mess around with it more. Maybe I'll switch out of it. But basically, it, if you guys have played WoW, it's similar to Rune of Power, where there's going to be a rune on the ground. When you're in it, you do 30% more damage. It's literally Rune of Power from WoW. But um, any spell is going to put this little rune down. When you're in it, you get the spell power. Now, if you swap weapons, it goes away. It's only going to work with the Fire Staff out. So keep that in mind. You can't throw down the rune and then swap. That buff will actually be removed. Now, in PvP, it's not that good because you're moving around a ton, but if you can take advantage of it, um, like I said with that initial Pillar of Fire Fireball combo, like if someone's full life, you can just Pillar of Fire Fireball. Um, the rune is on cooldown, but you, you get my point. It's going to be a huge burst damage. So that's what we're doing so far. Now, with Pyromancer, we're going with Pyromania that gives you, um, while holding a Fire Staff and below 50% max health damage is increased. So not something I'm going to like necessarily try to play around but it's nice when it helps right um also i need to get further down in the tree and flamethrower is awful okay so we, we we get extra damage when we're when we're on the run sometimes which is nice let it burn when burn deals damage you get 10 percent fortify making you a little tankier when you have a burnout which is nice once again especially for more of a glass cannon type of a deal kindle burn lasts 20 percent longer which is great so when we're getting big crits we get a lot out of that, right? Because that burning is actually 20% longer than it should be. We do have Watch It Burn, which light attacks causes them to burn as well. So light attacks and crits from Singe and Watch It Burn being modified by Kindle, which is fantastic. And we do have Burnout fully upgraded with All In and Heated Up. So it goes super far and um, cooldowns are reduced if you hit people along the way. All In isn't that good, I don't think, because most of the time you're not going to be hitting people a lot of the time you're going to use this talent to actually catch up to a runner if someone's trying to run away um, or line of sight you can chase them with burnout and if you guys haven't seen this talent look how far this thing goes it's ridiculous it's it's crazy far i almost just fell off the ledge there really really cool talent for chasing people and um, we're definitely going to take this base after we finish this youtube video as well so yeah that's the fire staff guys we have one more talent because i haven't hit level 20 yet um, I'll most likely be going with combat speed. When you activate fire staff, you're getting 10% haste. It just seems good. Um, trial by fire might be okay. Heat it up. I, I, I don't tend to block that much, and I don't have mana issues, so I don't I don't think I'll get heated up. And then fiery restoration. Um, actually, maybe fiery restoration. Yeah, might be a, might be a, a choice between combat speed and fiery restoration. Let me know down below what you guys think would be better. Fiery restoration actually might be the play here. Heavy attacks reduce fire staff cooldowns by 10% on hit. Not bad. To be honest, though, I don't keep my Fire Staff out for too long. I'm usually using the abilities and swapping the ice. So maybe maybe not to play either way. But one or the other, that's the Fire Staff. Let's get into the Ice Gauntlet. Last time I did the Ice Gauntlet breakdown, we were only level like 30. We've leveled up. We've maxed it to 20. Um, level 20 Ice Gauntlet. So let's see what's good. We got Cold Reach. Increase the damage of light and heavy attacks by 15% for targets further than 15 meters. A lot of the times, you're, you're further than 15 meters. That's just great extra dps especially because you can throw out an ice storm like pretty far away like this and then nuke someone with heavies so you're basically just getting 15 percent damage if you get a use case like that which is pretty dope next we got energized critical mm, a lot of these talents are going to stack up in different ways right and I'll, I'll get over that i'll i'll show you guys that in a second here but increases critical damage of ice spells by 15 percent when at full stamina it's just huge 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 crit when full stamina now stamina does not mean health all right i come from wow and stamina meaning health is confusing stamina means your ability to roll so that yellow bar you see at the bottom of the screen that's stamina all right so a lot of the times when i'm trying to burst i want to throw up my ice storm and then not move i want to be 15 yards away and then spam heavies into someone and, and throw the stun over and over which we'll get to here in a second we have recover 15 percent mana after triggering a critical hit on a target this is okay 
nothing crazy like i said mana is usually not an issue but hey we'll take a little bit of mana regen here and there we have ice storm and ice shower and entombed for our main abilities here and we're going to modify these and we'll go over that in a second we got gathering storm hit with three consecutive light attacks to grant player 15 mana once again something i could maybe consider dropping both of these critical retrieve and gathering storm aren't like critical talents but they do help um with conserving mana especially in longer fights and pve and in pvp now the problem with gathering storm and pvp is landing three consecutive light attacks is hard so i would call this more of a pve talent and if i was a pure pvp build i would probably opt for something like strength and tome and maybe even cleansing tome and dropping maybe critical rejuve in gathering storm but this is the spec I am right now, so let's cover it. We got Critical Frost. Increases critical chance if hitting an enemy in Frosted Area or Frostbite by 20%. Critical Frost synergizing with Energized Critical is just insane, right? Like, we're getting an extra 20% critical chance when they're frozen. And then the critical damage is increased by 15. This is very similar to a Shatter combo, man. So, so, so much fun. Um, next, we got Weakening Gust. That's going to give us 10% increased damage. Um, if people are below 50% life. So when someone's below 50 and you're 15 yards away and you're at full stamina, um, which one modifies the stamina? And when you're, oh yeah, and when you're at full stamina and you crit and this is up, you got 10% modifier, you got 15%, 20% uh, increased crit, you got 15% more critical damage. It's just crazy, right? Absolutely crazy. Ice Storm mana is decreased by 80% at full mana. It's something that I keep in mind, you know, if I can use Ice Storm at full mana, it's almost like a free Ice Storm, which is fantastic, but not something you can always get value out of. A lot of the times, though, since Ice Block gives you mana, you can sit in an Ice Block, return your full mana, wait for your cooldowns, break your block with right click so it doesn't expend any mana. If you break it with left click, it'll expend mana and knock people back. But now that you're a full mana, now you can drop a free Ice Storm with only a five mana cost, which is pretty nice. Right, um, and then Punishing Storm increases damage by 10% for each enemy in Ice Storm. Now, I do believe um, one of these talents is bugged, where when you swap weapons, your Ice Storm goes away, um, which we'll test here in a second. The, there was just server maintenance, so we'll see if they fixed it. But if you pop this and you swap weapons, yeah, the Ice Storm goes away. Now, a lot of people are like, okay, so it's not worth taking the talent then. In my opinion. If your Ice Storm is out, you should be trying to land a heavy attack with your Ice Weapon. If they roll out of it anyway and you don't want a heavy attack, then it doesn't matter if it goes away. So I don't see it as too much of an issue, so I play with it anyway. We got Heavy Freeze. Now this has got to be my favorite talent in the Ice Gauntlet. We got Heavy Attack will freeze a target if hit in Ice Storm or Frostbite for one second. What? We have a Freeze that doesn't DR and it doesn't have an internal cooldown. That's why every time we're dropping either the Ice Storm or the Ice Shower, we're going for a heavy attack so that we can get them frozen. They stay in place into another heavy attack. Guess what? Into another heavy attack, into another heavy attack, and then they die. And that's modified by everything we just talked about. So Heavy Freeze really makes the build. It's so much fun. We got Ultimate Chill. Actually, Ultimate Chill makes the build too. Ice abilities, chill targets, increasing ice damage by 35%. That is huge. Huge, huge damage. 35%. Guys, this is burst damage. This is every time they're in Ice Storm, every time they're in Ice Shower, you're getting 35% extra damage. So you modify this entire Ice Tempest tree together with increased crit. They, they can't move. They're taking more damage. You're, you're just one-shotting kids, and that's why this, this build is so fun. All right. Now we have Quick Frost. Increases speed by 10% in a Frosted Area. Not that insane. Um, You could go blocking stamina, but personally, I don't block that much. I prefer to roll or to use line of sight or to keep moving. Uh, blocking is not something I utilize super, super often. If I'm in melee range, I'm trying to get out of there. If I'm in casted range, I'm rolling around. So, so yeah. We have Ice Shower. This is kind of like a, a Frost Nova, Kona Cold, Frostbite combo. It doesn't do damage, but you can throw it on the ground, get a root on someone. And once they're in this root, you can get your heavy attacks on them, right? Once you're, they're heavy attacked, then they're pretty much dead. So, Ice Shower is super, super sick. You want to bait someone into that, get the Frostbite, and then go for the one-shot. Enduring Shower is fantastic. It makes it go to seven seconds, so they stay in it longer instead of four. So, it almost doubles the duration. It goes from four to seven, which is fantastic. Um, you get a speed boost while entering Ice Shower. So, Quick Frost and Quick Shower, I do believe, stack. So, yeah, you actually get, like, a little, little decent of a speed boost if you want it. Not something I take advantage of too often, but 
it is what it is. But Frostbite applies Rend to target, reducing defenses by 10% is huge. Because once again, this is on Burst. You have 10% reduced um, defense, stacking with Ultimate Chill, stacking with all the crit. This talent's really, really important. We have Entombed. Once again, we don't level this up with Strength and Tome and Cleansing Tome, but if I really wanted to in PvP, I could probably get rid of Gathering Storm and maybe Critical Rejuvenation and put those talents in here. I'd be a bit tankier, maybe a good option. Um, if you don't care about mana um, sustain as much, you want to be a little tankier, these two options might be okay. Um, reduce all active cooldowns for ice abilities by 20% when casting an ability in a frosted area. Once again, maybe not the craziest talent because a lot of the times when you throw this down and someone runs out, you're going to run out too. But it is one of those things to keep in mind that if you can stand in your own ice storm, you can reduce the cooldown of getting another ice storm back. So it's it's nice, but it's not it's nothing crazy like some of these talents. And casting an ice ability creates an ice hardened layer, granting 20% fortify. I love this. This gives you tankiness. This is fantastic for two seconds. So every time we're throwing this down, we got a two second shield. We throw this down, we have a two second shield. We cast this, we have a two second shield, right? Lots of really great abilities. Um, and then in case you guys didn't know, with Entombed, there's a um, two ways to break it. You can left mouse button and cause a damaging knockback, but it costs 20 mana. So keep that in mind. There's the downside. It costs 20 mana. Or if you can right click out of it, and it will just break you out. It won't do the knockback, but it won't cost mana. So if you're pairing Entombed with Ice Storm and you want to take advantage of Storm Summoner, you want to right click. If there's no one around you, you want to right click to save mana. But if there are people around you and you want the knockback and the damage, you want to left click. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, but that's pretty cool. So we covered the attributes. There's the weapon mastery. Let's look at our let's look at our gear. So we are playing light armor. That is a little bit under 13. Um, weight here and that's achieved by light headwear medium chest wear light gloves light legwear and light footwear so the only it's all light with a medium chest and all of my gear guys is the marauder ravager gear um that's pretty much it we we took the 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 seal from the marauder vendor to put on con and int it's called seal of the oculus or oculus seal something like that and you can basically reforge your gear um, in the town to give it any stats. So we put six con, 10 in on all of the gear to give us a nice balance between con and int. And that will put me to 50 con. So I just spend all my points in int from there. Now for my earrings, you guys can't see this because it's being covered up, but we have um, some jewelry here, just pure int. This is just stuff I got from Quest. I bought this from the auction house, which reduces max cooldowns. This is not best in slot by any means. Um, and then we have a pretty nice earring here with 16 int. Stamina regen and elemental damage absorption. Um, in all the gear, we are going with the diamonds um, for some nice physical damage and elemental damage absorption. A little bit of each, which is nice, and it feels pretty darn good to have the, have the diamonds in the gear. It makes me feel pretty tanky. And architect depths level 42 weapon we got yesterday. Epic ice gauntlet. That's my first epic item with 21 in, and we have the cruel four. Um, Malachite gem in here, which gives me 12% damage against targets with with CC, slow stunts and roots. And now this Cruel 4, guys, if you've watched this far into the video, you can really, really tell why Cruel 4 is going to be good, right? Cruel 4 is going to be stacking with all of these Ice Gauntlet abilities, giving your 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 crit chance so, so, so big on the, uh, on the burst, man. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. So, we got the Malachite. Unfortunately, this Arctic Depths doesn't have increased crit chance like my last weapon, but it does just a ton of damage with 435 gear score, so which is good in general. We have the Fire Staff here, just 20 in, nothing crazy. We do have critical chance in here, no socket. If I were to socket a Fire Staff, I'd probably go with an Opal, um, but this one doesn't have a socket, so we, we don't have that pretty much at all. But guys, that's the gear. That's the gems. We're at light. We could think about going medium gear in a war, put on maybe like a heavy heavy helm or heavy legs or something like that to bump up our tankiness but for world pvp absolutely love playing light armor another advantage of that light armor guys you get that 20 percent bonus damage which stacks with everything else we just talked about so we're just getting so much damage having light armor with the ice gauntlet but that's pretty much my current build and that's how we're pulling off some crazy one shots guys if you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up if you did not enjoy the video you can thumbs it down it's okay too talk to me in the comments about what you guys want to see in upcoming uploads Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.